the uh, messages that our brother has brought to us of late uh, about the table uh, turns my thinking, and we had some discussion about this last Lord's Day, and I think a few weeks ago when we talked about the cup, both the cup and the bread, uh, we had many comments from John chapter 6. We're just, we're just drawn to that text, even though the things recorded there are not about the table, specifically. Uh, they're not about our remembrance and observance of this ordinance that our Savior gave to us. But because of our faith and our understanding of the, work, the working of faith in the heart and the connection that we have to the Savior, our hearts are drawn to these words that he stated to the audience there. Uh, this is a year before his execution, two years into his ministry. Many, many signs and wonders, much teaching, uh, much uh, clarification of misunderstandings or attempted clarification if they were willing to receive it. Many were not willing to receive what he said. And uh, those who calculate these things think that this, these words were spoken at the height of Jesus' public popularity, which then diminished after this because he said these words. He declared to them the cost of discipleship. John 6, 53. Most assuredly, or truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. So those statements of the reality of life from the Father, the bread that came down from heaven to give life to the world, see, those statements give us the, uh, the perspective that we need to understand this drawing near. We've spoken about that many times, our brothers in his message this evening, drawing near. Yet it's... <laughs> The reality is this is not just a close association. But it is his life in us. Denial of self. Ourself taking up our cross. Following him. Being connected to the vine. It's, there are so many. The, 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 this reality is so large. It takes many <laughs> illustrations for us to see the reality of it. It's illustrated in creation, the vine, and the branches. And then it's also illustrated in, in our own being or, or our own existence of eating and drinking to live. We take his life into us. And he becomes us. <laughs> we become him. We abide in him. He abides in us. Just as we eat and drink, our, 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 our food and drink becomes part of us. It becomes us. And it sustains our life. Even so does he. Now it's the illustration. The reality is we have life from him. Food and drink's not the reality. <laughs> for it passes away. That's what he said at the beginning of this to the crowd, wasn't it? Don't seek for the food which perishes, but seek for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Father will give you. So, brethren, as we come to the table, this is what we remember. That in him we have life. He laid down his life that we may have life. And this sacrifice of himself, I read this text to my mother this afternoon and and spoke to her about this. And the, uh, that, that, that we have life in him. Because of his, his, his body was acceptable. Having lived in the earth for 33 years without spot or blemish. Without compromise. Without turning away from the father. Then the time came his body was prepared and ready. To be offered to him. 
offered back to the Father as this sacrifice, as the Lamb, the Lamb of God. And this is what we remember when we come to the table, his giving of himself. His, and, and, and it is, this sacrifice is the source then of this life that we have from, that's, this is why we can eat and drink of him and have life from him because he gave himself to the Father in this manner. And then by faith, when we come to this table, we have life from him. It's not our coming to the table. It's not our correct observance of it, our, the number of times that we observe it after, you know, after some form or pattern that we've been commanded. That's not the point. Our having life from him is the point by our faith. But the faith that's been once for all delivered to the saints. The things that have been recounted to us this day as we've spoken. Brother Tony spoke about justification and the hope that we have and the working of God to bring us to himself. Brother Jeremy this evening speaking about these very large things of the beginning elements of God's revelation to the earth. Of course, now we've accepted these things. We've drawn near to him by this revelation. And his son then is making his father known to us. And the father has made him known to us. Huh. And so we come here to the table then to remember these things. That all that we have, all that we are, and all that we do, comes from them. That text that Brother Tony mentioned this morning, I appreciated that text in verse 8 of that text this morning, proclaim these things. Proclaim these things. Well, we, we, we proclaim his death here at the table Amen. until he comes. We speak about these things one to another and stir one another up. These words are spirit and they are life. See, So we come to the table then remembering these things and honoring the Son and blessing the Father by our remembrance and our submission. We come here because we've already submitted to him. And we live by this faith. We devote ourselves to him. So we come to this table then on the Lord's day. Remembering these things. Turning our hearts to them once again. In this, with this focus and this emphasis. Of the son who gave himself for us. Let's pray together. Father we bless your name.